everybody welcome back to another episode of the venom vlog and today we are actually going to dive into the cullen bun venom run uh, and you can see the reflection of my new circle light there um yes uh, so this run here is all in one trade paperback and i was you know so i don't have like scanned images that are going to pop up on screen i might flip up and show some of the artwork from time to time as we're talking about it but we're just going to go over the first couple issues in this, which is called Monsters. Uh, I think it's Monsters of Men or something like that. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Oh, Monsters of Evil. Uh, Monsters of Evil, it's three-parter. It goes from issues 23, 24, and 25. And then we're also going to talk about issues uh, issue 27.1, which is kind of a standalone one-shot issue that takes place after Minimum Carnage. So there is a story that takes place between uh, this run and you know the one-shot, uh, 27.1. It's called Minimum Carnage. We're going to save that and talk about that next season when we do another Carnage Week because we are running low on Carnage stories. And with the movie coming out next year, I want to save a lot of, you know, Carnage content till next year. So uh, so we'll get into Minimum Carnage, Superior Carnage, and the Carnage series that Jerry Conway did. And like the Red Goblin stuff, we'll get into all that next season for sure and that'll kind of wrap up a lot of the carnage content that we haven't talked about on the show yet so uh, so we'll get there so this one is just going to be the first three issues of cullen bunn's run and then his 27.1 issue um so without further ado you know we'll start off you can see some of the artwork here i actually really like some of the artists he teamed up with in this um you have like a, a tony silas who's the one who draws these three issues but the 27.1 is by marco cicetto who is currently doing Daredevil and also did Old Man Hawkeye. And I love his stuff, especially the symbiote stuff he did in Old Man Hawkeye, which we will definitely dedicate an episode to, I think either next season or the season after, we're going to get into the multiverse of Venom stories. And we'll talk about, you know, Venom in other adaptations, like in other universes. You know, we'll do some here and there from time to time. But I think in the, you know, season six or something, we'll probably get more into those and other universe versions of these characters. So um, so we'll get into Old Man Hawkeye at some point down the road. But I love that book. I recommend it. Go check it out if you haven't. Marco Cicchetto's work's amazing. And if you haven't read Daredevil, please pick that up too. The new book by uh, Chip Zdarsky. It's, I think it's on issue like 22 right now or something around there. It's fantastic. I think it's the best book Marvel puts out uh, hands down. So, um, so this book, you know, so now we have Flash Thompson. So I had a lot of questions at the end of Remender's run because I had heard Flash Thompson, you know, eventually ends up in Philadelphia. And I was kind of like, well, how does that happen? Is it a quick transition? Is it something Colin Bunn builds on? You know, what happened to Damien Hellstrom? What happened to that weird mark that was on Venom and Red Hulk and X-23 um, after, you know, the events of the Circle of Four story? I'm like, I had a lot of questions and Remender didn't really wrap a lot of stuff up. And I guess he just knew, okay, someone else is going to take over and I'm just going to let them kind of deal with some of those stories. And then I was also wondering, is Flash still a member of the Avengers? Because obviously, while this book is coming out, Rick Remender is writing Secret Avengers. And I didn't know if the continuity was there, you know, or if Rick Remender stuff happened before this run, what it was going to be. So it turns out Venom is still a member of the Secret Avengers. Um, he still interacts with uh, Valkyrie. There's still kind of a relationship there. So all this that we're going to talk about today is still taking place during like a kind of uh, at the same time as Remender's Secret Avengers run. So there is that. So now some of these questions are being answered for me. Uh, so yes, so we start off and we have Flash kind of swinging around doing his spider thing, um, but also reminiscing on his life as a bully. Uh, you know, this is Colin Bunn kind of establishing like, all right, here's my take on Flash Thompson, uh, but obviously still sticking to the roots of the character, the origins of the character, um, and kind of building off that. So he gives you like this two-page recap, which I thought was done pretty well. Uh, I like the design with the art and stuff um, with that Tony did here. And uh, you get to see Jack Lantern and the Circle of Four and all that, and it sets everything up so that way um, Flash, you know, it sets up new characters. You have this uh, woman who's like a secret investigator, and uh, I think her name's Katie. And yeah, Katie Kiernan, she works for the Daily Inquisitor. So she's kind of like, a, you know, works for like, well, not like a serious news site. She kind of writes about, um, you know, Bat Boy and, you know, <laughs> the, the kid who was like, looked like a bat. She kind of does like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, National Choir, I think that's what that magazine was called. Um, but she kind of writes like low end journalism stuff. But occasionally she does get stuff right because she writes about weird things that big uh, papers like the Daily Bugle won't cover. So, uh, so she's kind of like this follows like a seedy underbelly of you know New York and, and other places and she has connections in other places so Flash 
actually asks her for help um, to uh, to track down these cult members. And that's pretty much what this story is, this uh, Monsters of Evil three-parter. It's about Flash uh, following up with Damien Hellstrom. So I guess somewhere between where we saw Damien Hellstrom trying to help save you know Las Vegas during the Circle of Four story, and this one, Damien Hellstrom has taken over as leader of a, a religious cult of people called the DOA. And so, uh, and they've been around the Departments of Occult Armaments, I believe is what they're called. Um, they have been around in Marvel Universe for a while. So Damien Hellstrom has come in and has decided to take over. And he has kind of turned against some of the other heroes that he was working with, like Doctor Strange and stuff like that. So Flash wants to know why. Because last time he saw Hellstrom, Hellstrom had, you know, looked at him weird, you know, because obviously Hellstrom could see the hell mark that was on Venom and that was on Red Hulk, X-23, and so forth. So uh, so Venom's like, I, you know, I need to get answers. Flash, like, I need to get answers. So he goes and he starts fighting this cult and he starts taking them down and he finds out that they're creating, like, um, you know, like they're, I don't know, adding some kind of super strength stuff, almost like super soldier serum uh, in a way, but he's they're enhancing some of their cultists. Uh, some of their cultists have willingly sacrificed to be um, enhanced in some way, and it looks like Hellstrom is trying to build some kind of army. Like he's trying to up the DOA and uh, and up their strengths and up their abilities and things like that, and you don't really know why. And so uh, he does show up, though, and, uh, you know, kind of tries to explain it to Venom, but the two of them get into a fight, and, uh, and actually the fight is so intense that uh, at so some point Damien Hellstrom, it seems, puts a demon inside Venom. Uh, so Venom's like, you know, there's something going on. My anger is like, you know, flaring up a lot lately. And, you know, he just, Flash isn't really sure if it's because of, you know, the memories of him being a bully are starting to flow back in, you know, because he's in New York. He's seeing his friends. He just lost Betty. So he's kind of like at a self-destructive point in his life. His mom's going through a lot of stuff because obviously she was just kidnapped by the Savage Six. And then right before that, her husband had died. And that probably stirred up a lot of emotions in her because her husband wasn't a very good guy, obviously. And she still stuck by him till the end, um, despite the fact that it kind of distanced her, uh, her from her own children. Because obviously they didn't like the, the father, their father, and she still loved him for whatever reason. So, so she's going through a lot too. So there's still some emotional stuff in here, but most of that plays out in issue 27.1, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, this mainly is just three issues of fighting. <laughs> it's, it really is. It's just Colin Bunn just like trying to establish, okay, we're going in a full-on action direction with my with you know my story. We'll have some emotional stuff, but it's mainly just going to be just crazy over-the-top action. So you have you know Venom, Agent Venom, fighting Hellstrom for most of this, uh, and then. That's when Hellstrom, like I said, he kind of awakens this demon in a way. So you think he put the demon in him, but it's not the case. Venom had a demon in him um, when going into this story. It was put on there by the Hellmark. So there's something that's, there is some kind of demon in him. But I think we're going to find out that it may not actually be a demon. This, I'm thinking, because I know some of the outcome of this to an extent, I know that from the Daniel Way run, when they did that run we talked about, which, you know, I kind of liked, a lot of people do not like, where they kind of took Venom into a different direction and kind of made it like the movie The Thing, um, almost like a direct copy in some ways of The Thing, and they had that symbiote, and then it got bonded with Venom at the end of it, like he reabsorbed, because it was like a sliver of Venom that this group in Antarctica was like, you know, uh, experimenting on. And then Venom reabsorbed it into him. I'm thinking that's the demon that's waking up, that's, you know, got the hell mark attached to it. I'm thinking. But I think that's just because I know a vague little bit of information about that, how, you know, it transfers to Andy later on. So I could be wrong. I don't know. But there is a cool shot of Venom turning into like a demon type with horns on, on his head and stuff. So, yeah, Colin Bunn always like, I feel like every time he gets on a Venom book, uh, start I guess starting here, um, he would mess with Venom visually, <laughs> like have the artist mess with Venom visually, because uh, you have Agent Venom and then just boom, you know, he starts growing these extra limbs out of his back, and then he, you know, gets the horns out of his head, and obviously Colin Bunn's the same writer that created Rune Venom for the War of the Realm storyline, which I really like, and I'm playing as in Marvel Future Fight, so I really like, you know, a lot of stuff Colin Bunn does sometimes with the character visually, or has his artists do, you know, like writes in the story and the artists, you know, take it to the next level, so I kind of like that. Um, but this is where this famous image comes from. I finally get to see now uh, from Venom 24, the birthday cake uh, cover by Scotty Young. 
I use that image a lot sometimes. <laughs> and speaking of, of birthdays, uh, Pikachu had a birthday recently. And uh, I mentioned, you know, I wanted to give a shout out to people out there who do watch the show that do have birthdays. So uh, so this, you know, reminded me of that. So I was like, oh, good, I'll bring it up in this episode. So, um, so if you're out there and you follow the show and you have a birthday coming up or you had one just pass, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll try to give you a shout out in a future episode, um, you know, when I can. So, um, so Pikachu, happy belated birthday. Sorry, I'm so late with that. Um, so anyway, so we have now, you know, getting into Monsters of Evil Part 2. Look at that. Venom has wings <laughs> and demon horns, and he's kind of a demon. And uh, and he's fighting the cult members, and he actually eats one, I think. Um, and then starts seeing that they're begging, like, please eat more of us, eat more of us. But then he sees with his human eyes that that's not actually what they're saying. They're like, no, please don't eat us. Like, what are you doing? Um, so it kind of messes with, with Venom. And so he actually runs away, and he leaves Hellstrom behind, and goes and finds Katie and is like, hey, I need help, you know. And then through through the course of the story, Venom is kind of trying to bounce back up on his feet so he can have another go at, uh, you know, at Hellstrom and try to get more answers. Um, so that he, but he says, first, I need to get an exorcism. So he talks to Katie and says, hey, you have some connections to weird people. Can you find someone to do an exorcism? And so this one guy says, yeah, I'll help you out if I can. And then, boom, like the suit just goes nuts on the guy. And, uh, and so then Flash has to like tame it back down. So what I like about this is that through the whole Remender run, Venom has kind of been neutered in a way, like the suit, because it's been docile, like it, it's pumped full of chemicals that make it kind of dormant so that Flash can be a lot more in control than typically you would be in this situation. So I don't know. So some of this could be the suit just trying to lash out, or it could be, like I said, that the, the mania part or the part that will become mania later. Um, or maybe there's a real demon in there. Like, I don't know the full story. We're going to obviously read it together. Some of you might know. So, you know, try not to spoil it for me if you can. Um, but uh, but I noticed, like, you know, Venom is... There's some, uh, there's a lot going on with him. And I'm like, ah, I got to give Colin Bunn some credit. I, I like that he at least built off of what Remender did. And he's going in this direction. I don't know if him and Remender talked about it or if he heard about plans. Because obviously we did an episode recently where uh, Remender had all these big plans for Venom and he wanted to do like another invasion story and all this other stuff. Um, you know, part of me is, you know, glad he didn't. <laughs> but that's also I always like to see writers finish what they start. And, you know, I'm sure he had a lot of ideas. Same with Daniel Way. I always wanted to see what he really intended for the end of his run of Venom. Uh, maybe we'll get some of that in his Thunderbolts run coming up uh, that we'll read. But right now, you know, Flash is still a member of Secret Avengers, so we got to stick to this for a little bit. And then we'll get into the Thunderbolt stuff. Um, so, yeah, so Flash, anyway, he's, uh, you know, now found Hellstrom again. The demon thing couldn't come out of him, so he's like, all right, well, we just need to go take down Hellstrom. Now that I'm recharged, I'm ready to go, um, I'm going to go back into battle. And so he goes back and, uh, you know, I think Damien summons all these monsters here, the monsters of evil. So it's all these different deities that have possessed uh, different physical forms here on earth and they're from different cultures and stuff so Damien summons them because the, his followers his cultists weren't strong enough obviously to fight Venom so uh so these you know giant gods show up so Venom is fighting them and then uh, actually at one point he's about to get eaten and he makes spikes and it goes through the monsters uh, one of the monsters mouth which is a pretty cool scene and finally he's just like okay uh you know Damien has the one up on me but uh, if these gods are kind of under Damien's control, like they're not really on their own free will doing what he wants them to do, maybe that's my Hail Mary. So he actually convinces the monsters to turn on Damien Hellstrom and, uh, and he gets them all to unite and they actually beat Damien Hellstrom. Um, so I thought that was cool because I was like, yeah, I don't know if Venom can beat Damien Hellstrom or not in a fight. Um, but with the help of these gods, he was able to. Uh, so he's actually uh, brought Damien Hellstrom, I think, to the raft uh, somewhere and locked him up. So that's where the issue ends. And then Damien tells him uh, why. He's like, so here's why I turned on all my friends. I turned on all my friends. I turned on the, you know, Doctor Strange and all the other heroes because I found out that Mephisto... There's, there's a, 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 an ascension thing happening. There might be a new leader to hell uh, before we know it. Like, I don't know when, but it's it's a plan in place. Which I was like, holy cow, were they planning Johnny Cage, or Johnny Cage, Johnny Blaze? Uh, Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat. Uh, I was like, are they planning Johnny Blaze uh, to be, you know, the Ghost Rider, uh, King of Hell thing? Like, this early on? Was this like an idea that was percolating at Marvel back then? Um, it's kind of neat, because I'm like, wow, could it 
could everything really be connected that way? Or did someone just read this story, you know, Donny Cates and go, uh, oh, that would be an interesting thing to follow up on. Um, possibly, because, you know, Donny Cates is a Venom fan, so he probably read this whole run. So, uh, so I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. I'm like, well, we already had Las Vegas, and then we had this story basically telling you that came out soon after, you know, Circle 4, telling you that uh, that there's an ascension happening and that at some point there will be a new king of hell or queen of hell and Damien Hellstrom wants to be it because he's like, hey, I'm doing some crappy things right now, I know, because I turned on some friends, but wouldn't you rather me be king of hell than, you know, like uh, Blackheart or, you know, or, or you know, some of the other people? And he goes, but Venom, you're on that list because you have been hellmarked uh, by Mephisto as did Red Hulk and stuff like that. He goes, so there are other options, sure, but you know, do you want any of them or do you yourself want to be King of Hell? He's like, I don't think you do. So wouldn't you rather it be me? And then I can remove the mark from you, and, you know, and I'm kind of the devil you know. And uh, and he's like, that's probably a better scenario for the world. And so, you know, when when Flash hears that, he's kind of like, maybe, but I'm still gonna we're still gonna keep you locked up here. And, uh, and I'm still going to go take down these other groups because the DOA is still out there. Uh, there's other cults and other factions that are out there. He's like, so I still got to go deal with them. And he goes, but uh, when the time comes, we'll, we'll figure something out. He goes, but that's if I can trust you. I still don't know if I can trust you. So, um, yeah, I like that. So, so yeah, he even says, Hellstrom at the end says, wouldn't you rather it be me running hell than someone who's going to do a shit job at it, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, so Venom's like, yeah food for thought, I guess. So he goes back to Katie and they start talking and basically uh, he, you know, reveals, you know, like, uh, hey, I'd like to work together again. Um, I don't know if there's really an attraction thing there. Uh, you know, I'm sure some people could read into that there might be, but it seems like Flash is just like, hey, it's nice to have someone who can be a connection to me. You know, it's like, because there's some missions I got to go on that the Avengers can't really know everything about. And that's the other thing too. The Avengers just kind of he, they're, they're just in the background. It's almost like Colin Bunn didn't really know any of Remender's plans for Secret Avengers for the most part, uh, which could be the case. I don't know. Um, or maybe he just didn't want to deal or tie into any of those plans. But it just felt like he, you know, he's writing Flash here and Flash just calls and goes, you never see the Avengers on the other line of the phone. And he's just like, hey, I need the suit. And they're like, okay, we'll send it to you. And I'm like, is it that easy for him to get the suit? Didn't he just recently like kill some bad guys and that kind of pissed off the Avengers? You know, so... It, he's but he's so it's so easy for him to get the suit now so it's just like one panel he calls he's like give me the suit and the next page he's venom and i'm like well i guess you you can't bog down the stories too much with those kind of details but i would really like to see a little bit more of like why the avengers just give him the suit so willingly or if there is a struggle or if they send it and they're just keeping an eye on him via satellite um i don't know well, i guess we'll maybe we'll find out i don't know but that's one of those things where i'm reading the book and i'm like he just had like he just gets it just like that um but uh but yeah so i mean or maybe that was something he worked out with him at the end of the last run could be um but then at the end he does try to call uh betty to check in on her and he's like hey i know you're not answering my calls i get it i just want to make sure you're okay after everything that's been going on and after you found out that i'm venom you know but she doesn't answer the phone so he just leaves a message and then that's when uh, the lighthouse calls the avengers and they say okay we might have something for you that we need you involved with um it's carnage it looks like he has broken out uh, of i think ravencroft yeah i think ravencroft so uh, or no thunderbolts mountain that's where they were keeping him, thunderbolts mountain so that story does play out in a book called minimum carnage um but we are not going to talk about that in this episode like i said i'm going to save minimum carnage for next season and we'll get into it next season so what we're going to do here instead is uh so i think uh, minimum carnage ends after venom so it's it has like a venom scarlet spider crossover so it ties into two venom books two scarlet spider books and then there's a minimum carnage alpha and omega so it's like a six issue series so it does take us through venom you know 26 and 27 so to conclude that storyline they do a one shot afterwards called venom 27.1 and that's where we're gonna skip to so that is this issue here called The Evil Inside Us All. And this issue, I gotta say, it's by Marco Cicchetto, so the artwork is amazing. Check out this artwork, it's so good. I love how he draws the symbiotes, um, and he does it really well there with the, the mouth open and stuff, because obviously that's not Agent Venom's typical look. But now lately he's been getting angrier and he's fighting these cults. So it's a new cult that's tied to Damien Hellstrom, and Hellstrom has given this information to Flash. He's like, hey, I know you're going out there to look for bad guys, so I'll give you some of that information as per our agreement. 
Um, so here's where some other cults are that are kind of tied to this, you know, descendants, ascendant, ascension thing, you know. And uh, so he's like, okay, cool. So he's out there kind of doing missions in a way kind of for Hellstrom, even though Hellstrom's behind a, a cage, which is kind of cool because it reminds me of Hannibal Lecter, um, which is neat, which is something I always thought of for stories for Carnage and Joker. I always, that's always how I think of those guys. They're always behind a glass taunting the hero on the other side and giving them clues to go solve something. That's kind of how I always see Carnage and Joker. So it was kind of neat to see them do that with Hellstrom here because it reminded me a lot of like that where he's like, hello, Clarice. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so this storyline, you know, Venom is talking to Hellstrom and they're, you know, Hellstrom's like, hey, thanks for help, you know, like, or thanks for taking down that group. I needed them taken down because uh, they were going to interfere with my plans anyway. And Flash's like, stop playing me, you know, and he's like punching the glass and the guards come in and they go, Agent Venom, stand down, you know. And he's like, oh, I guess our, our meeting's cut short today. He's like, you should really get that temper under control. He's like, is everything okay at home? And you can just see like Flash just getting so angry and so pissed. So this issue, what I like about this is this is the issue that answers my question that I had, which is why does Flash leave New York? And, and you know, how soon is that going to happen? Are they going to do it over the course of this whole run? Or what's the case? Um, they do it in this issue. And, I, and normally I'd be, if I heard that, in a pitch like hey in one issue we're going to explain why flash leaves new york i don't know if I, i'd be like really just one issue you think you can do it this is actually a really good issue in my opinion this has flash um thinking back on what kind of person he was in high school so he's really reflecting and he's trying to get to the root of his anger um and meanwhile at the same time all these things in his real life are happening betty's still not communicating with him and she's kind of written him off um, and, you know, not answering his calls, returning his calls. And then his mom, uh, she's been through so much, uh, like I said at the beginning of the episode, that she's checking herself into like a nursing home so that she can get uh, mental and physical care because she's just on the verge of collapse and breaking down because of her husband dying, being kidnapped by, you know, the Savage Six, um, you know, and all the problems she has trying to communicate with her son and the blame that her kids put on her for being, you know, um, for kind of being complicit in a way for the beatings that their dad used to give them um, by not doing anything. You know, she kind of ignored their cries for help sometimes. So she's just, she's, you know, it's, it's a lot for her. So she's being put in a, like a place to be taken care of. And, uh, and Pete, you know, Peter Parker's there helping Flash check her in. And he's like, Pete, thank you so much. You know, like I, you know, Betty and I are on, on the outs, you know, she's not going to come help. And he goes, but um, it's nice to have you here. Thank you so much. And Pete's like, hey, man, it's okay. He's like, you know, your mom's been through a lot and, you know, she'll bounce back, man. He's like, you, you, just like you do, you know, like you're Flash Thompson. You've been through a lot too and you bounce back. He's like, so, you know, don't worry about it. I'm here to help if you ever need anything. And he goes, oh, by the way, I ran into an old friend of ours from high school, someone that, you know, obviously Flash used to pick on also, uh, but it was this kid named AJ who in high school was gay and Flash beat him up and Flash does they try to do like a soft retcon a little bit where it's like okay Flash is beating him up and he I think Flash even calls him like a derogatory term you know for because he's gay um, but Flash even says while he's narrating he's like I don't think I really knew what gay was he's like I was like 17 or 16 at the time he's like I didn't really know what gay was or what it meant he goes but that's not why I picked on the kid he goes I picked on him because like the same reason I picked on Peter Parker or anybody else I was angry because I was getting beaten up at home by my dad and I had I felt I had no control over my life and be, beating up other people gave me a sense of control and he's like because that's I was on that hamster wheel that you know repeat the sins of the father thing and he goes so I like that they they try like hey Flash admits he was a bad guy but I don't think he knows how bad of a guy he was until this issue and I gotta really commend Colin Bunn here I thought this issue was really great you actually see Flash beat up AJ so badly that he actually broke AJ's arm. He pinned him down to the ground, broke his arm, and other bullies even were like, Flash, I think he's had enough. Like, what are you doing? Um, and Flash is like, holy crap, I, you know, I went too far. And, but Flash, you know, a lot of these memories aren't fresh in his mind because, you know, it left a, a, an effect for sure, but not as big of an effect as it did on AJ. So when Flash says okay, I guess I'll call AJ. Like Peter gives Flash his number. He calls him and AJ's like, hey, come on in. You know, here's here's my husband, Dan. Like we, you know, we live in, we just moved back to town to New York. And he goes, and I 
uh, represent a school board uh, or a group of people that work with schools all around the country who try to help um, mentors and teachers, you know, get into get jobs and get into positions to where they can help kids who grew up troubled. And he goes, which is kind of why I want you here. He's like, you know, you've been a soldier. I've, I've read up on your life and he goes and, uh, you know, and I think you might actually be good at teaching or doing something like that and, and kind of passing on your experiences on to others to maybe prevent other bullies out there and stuff from being bullies and, 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 and redirecting their own pain in that way. And I was like, that's, wow, that's really nice of this guy. Like, holy cow. Um, and he even, so Flash was like, hey, I'm sorry for what I did to you. Like, and he's like, oh, don't apologize. Like, we were kids. It was stupid, all that stuff. He's like, don't worry about it. He's like, it's life's about second chances. And I found a way to move on. And this is how I want to help all of us uh, move on is, uh, is, you know, maybe with some opportunity for you. And I really love that. But then you find out uh, that AJ, you know, Dan, AJ's husband is like, Dan, or he's like, AJ, come here for a second. So, you know, AJ's like, excuse me, Flash, I'll be right back. And they go in the other room. It's, it's a small apartment. So with the, you know, Flash can still hear them. And AJ and Dan are talking in the kitchen. And Dan says, why'd you stop his, you interrupted his apology. Why did you do that? Tell him, tell him that you still wake up with nightmares that still to this day, you are you have trouble using your arm for certain things because of how bad it was broken. Like tell him that it's not easy to forgive him and that, that he's, he still causes you pain to this day. And, and AJ's like, what's the point of that? He's like, maybe by doing this and helping him, It'll help both of us move on and uh, and knowing that we, you know, we're helping each other, but also maybe other kids out there won't go through what I'm going through because maybe he'll, you know, help those kids. So I I don't know who AJ is too, too well, but uh, or like at all, really, but I, I think he's a great character. And I don't know if Colin Bunn based him off anyone he knew, but he's like, he's really like, yeah, like for, for to to face your bully and say to them, hey, it's okay, it's water under the bridge, but to actually still be suffering from the beatings they took. So Flash hears them saying that, and he realizes, holy crap, this guy has, you know, wakes up at night, you know, uh, having night terrors. His, his life, like my, my mom does that. She wakes up from our, from our, from my father, she still wakes up having these nightmares, and, um, and I'm sure she'd never forgive, you know, him for what he did, and, and rightly so, probably, but so to see, AJ here kind of trying to help Flash. I'm like, wow, that's something, man. That is really something. So I don't know. This story really resonated with me. I really liked it. And uh, in the end, um, you know, Flash, he's like, I don't know. He's starting to really see that he's not a good guy. And in, in a lot of people's eyes, it's it goes back further than just some of the mistakes he's made lately. And he, knew, he always knew he was a bully and he hurt people, but he didn't know to what extent. And I think he's learning it. So he's sleeping on the couch and he has this, he has this moment where he just like wakes up. His eyes look a little red and he wakes up and he calls the Avengers and goes, I need the suit now. And you're like, what, what's going on? And then he goes to, um, to Massachusetts back to where that cult was. And there's that one of the surviving members, a guy, he, he broke the guy's arm. So it parallels what he did to AJ. And he goes in there as Venom and look at this, look at that page. It's so nasty and awesome. He he transformed himself to look like somebody else, like a like a, a overweight nurse, I guess. And uh, he starts beating the guy up. And he says, look, every time you close your eyes, uh, I want you to see my face. He's like, every time you think about doing a bad thing, I want you to see my face. So I didn't come here for more information out of you about your cult or about Hellstrom. I just came here to beat you up. And you're like, God dang, that's like, not, so what's going on? So again, the suit maybe acting out of control or maybe there is a demon in flash and this is it starting to rise up um and you know and it's like yes give me the suit because flash the next day doesn't know that he did that or at least he doesn't ad admit to doing it because uh, he runs into pete again says hey pete thanks for telling me about aj i went and met him you know uh and things are good and you know i have an announcement to make and and pete's like oh thanks like sit down and tell me about it and he goes, but hey, man, you look like crap. Like, what, are you sleeping? And he's like, yeah, I guess I, I went to bed early last night, but I've, I'm super tired right now and I'm, I'm exhausted. And he goes, so I don't know what's going on. That reminded me of the early days when Peter Parker had the black costume. 
and it started taking him out for joy rides at night, looks like something might be influencing the suit to, um, or influencing Flash to do that as well. So, um, so I'm curious. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where that goes. So anyway, so Flash sits down with Pete and he asks him, "Hey, when I, we were in high school, like I know I bullied you, and I know it was awful." He goes, "But, you know, you forgave me, right? Like, you know, you forgave me, and 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 I wasn't, I wasn't that bad, was I?" Um, because obviously he's thinking about what he did to AJ. And Peter says, you know, if you want me to be honest, and Flash's like, yes, please, be honest with me. And uh, Pete says, no, you were awful, Flash. He's like, there were days where I wanted to call out sick of school. And he goes, and I loved school. I loved going to school and making straight A's. He goes, school was one of my favorite places to go. And he says, I was a good student and, you know, and kind of a nerd. He's like, so I liked going to school and you made me not want to go because of how bad you treated me. And he go, and then he said, um, there were days where I had to come up with other excuses to like get away from you. I would not go to the bathroom all day because I was afraid you would follow me in there and, you know, give me a swirly or do things that, you know, like dunk my head in the toilet, you know, or, or just pull my underwear over my head or, you know, whatever you were going to do. He's like, or just beat me up. He's like, he goes, no, Flash, you were terrible. He's like awful. And he goes, and I, I don't know if I forgive you. I just know that I've, I found a way to move on. So he basically mirrors what AJ said. Like AJ's kind of like, didn't really say he forgave Flash, kind of, but it, like he, he like hinted at it, but he didn't really say it. Um, but he did say like, I found a way to move on and or move around it. And that's kind of what Pete says. And once Flash hears that, he goes, okay, I'm a scumbag. And I, I now I know to what level of a scumbag I am. And I think it's probably time maybe I take that offer from AJ so he says, uh, I think it's from AJ. I think that's where he gets the off from. But he says, Pete, uh, thanks for meeting here today. My announcement is that I'm going to finally leave New York City and I'm going to go try to make a new life somewhere else and start fresh. And when I read that, I was like, okay. So they did, Colin Bunn did do it really well in one issue. I think, I don't know, like, because this run, that first three issue story, Monster of Evil, I was like, eh, just kind of goofy, fun, whatever, over the topness. Um, and Minimum Carnage, I did read it. We'll talk more about it next uh, season. But, you know, just kind of okay to me, too. I love Scarlet Spider. I love that book. So we'll talk a little bit about that maybe, too, because I love that book. But um, but I was I was feeling like, eh, I could probably breeze through this really quickly. But then I got to that single issue, and I read it, and I was like, I got to include it in this episode. I got to end this episode on a strong note, because Monster Vivo, I was just kind of like, meh on. I'm like, eh, it's fine, whatever. Um, and it's setting up some things I'm kind of intrigued by. But that one shot was really good. That was Colin Bunn writing some actual emotional stuff, and I wasn't expecting that in this run. I, I thought he was going to kind of breeze through some of the emotional stuff like he did in Monster of Evil and just tell like these wacky over-the-top Venom stories. But he didn't in this issue. He he nailed it and delivered really well. So um, it's m my favorite issue so far in this book. After reading Monster of Evil, Minimum Carnage, and 27.1, 27.1 is definitely my favorite issue so far. So let me know what you think of Monsters of Evil and 27.1. And again, hold your thoughts on Minimum Carnage. We'll get to that next season when we do our next Carnage Week for sure. And, uh, and you know, let me know what you think, uh, you know, of, of these, at least these four issues of Collins Run so far. Um, I really like 27.1. I thought it was great. I thought they did a, a good job having Flash realize the depths of his past sins and uh, giving him a chance to springboard off of to move forward with his life uh, and hopefully try to be better from now on. Will he succeed? He's got a demon in him. He's got a symbiote. We'll see. There's a lot of the odds are stacked against them, but I'm still curious to see it. So we'll definitely talk, you know, talk about more of these coming up in the future. Definitely. And uh, also I'll have uh, my Venom number 29 and 30 review because uh, 30, I think just came out or about to come out tomorrow, I think. So we'll definitely get those reviews up uh, for you or those discussions for you for those two episodes uh, as well. And then I also read Empires and uh, the, the Null story, the Null is Coming story. Um, I read that one and then also Symbiote Spider-Man. So maybe we'll do an episode on that too. And then we'll dive back into Flash Thompson stuff. Um, and then all of King and Black that we're going to talk about, uh, we'll do next season on the show because I want to make sure we have enough episodes to finish uh, the Colin Bunn Venom run at least. And then we'll get into Space Knight and some of the other stuff uh, next season as well. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. As always, I do appreciate it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of these issues and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.